there's a war going on and that war is unprovoked and is targeted against civilians and civil infrastructure. And while probably you are not within the war zone and I would hope you would not be in there, that kind of war that is going on has implications. And one of those implications, apart from political and economical implications, is that you should definitely think of running your own services on your own infrastructures. Let me explain. This is Carsten with OpenTech and in this video I'm going to explain to you why you should be able to run your own infrastructure and your own services. Let's get into it. This war is fought on several levels and on several battlefields. There is the physical battlefield, the people fighting for the country, fighting for their independence. There is the humanitarian battlefield with millions of people leaving their country, with a lot of displaced people and a lot of refugees. And there is also the economical and IT infrastructural battlefield where sanctions have been imposed and where companies decided to shut down services that they offered previously. And while I personally totally second what has been imposed there, the thing that disturbed me and got me troubled is how easily services that we take for granted could be shut down. While it is not possible to have replacements for services such as Google Maps or Apple Pay or Google Pay in place, it is easily be possible to have replacements to services offered by cloud providers at your disposal. So you would be able, if you just plan and set up things properly, to run your own file sharing service, to run your own password management service, to run your own in-company collaboration service, and so on and so forth. All of those things can easily run off your own hardware or off rented virtual machines that could then again easily be transferred over to other hosters if required. So what I'm trying to say is the events going on should make us reconsider the way that we are running our infrastructure. I propose two potential ways going forward and the good thing is it does not matter which way and which path you choose the things that need to be done are pretty much identical. So it is more like a matter of personal preference and not a matter of actual ability to do things. The first option would be to host your own services on rented virtual machines or generally on rented infrastructure within data centers or cloud providers such as AWS Azure or Google Cloud. The other option would be to actually run your own hardware, probably even old hardware, in your own organization or even at home, since the aspect of being able to run services is not an aspect that is exclusive to individuals or exclusive to organizations. No, it actually affects all of us. So those two options are there. Running services on rented infrastructure or running services on your own infrastructure. Both of those options have their pros and cons. And let's talk them through. The pros for running services on top of rented infrastructures are you don't need to care about the hardware, obviously. You don't need to care about connectivity, obviously. You could benefit from 
dirt cheap prices and you could obviously also benefit from shared services such as a shared network infrastructure that is way more resilient than individual infrastructure ever could be or from shared network security aspects. So a lot of aspects that are on the pro side of things. On the con side of things, well, you are dependent on that specific provider. If that provider decides to shut down your services, you are lost. You have to pay for the virtual machines each and every month. So if for whatever reason you're running short on cash, your services wouldn't be available anymore. You would need to trust that specific provider. Within a public cloud environment, you are always running in a shared infrastructure and you always rely on that specific provider to be trustworthy. And in times of war and crisis, let me put it that way, there are many organizations that would be interested in understanding what is actually running where, which data is there, and so on and so forth. So that aspect of trustworthiness and that aspect of probably resilience against those attempts to gain deeper insights is something that you would need to expect from your provider. Apart from that, there's also the political question. Most of the big cloud providers are either headquartered in the United States or in China. And how do I put that? You should carefully choose whom to trust. Also with smaller providers, they are still organizations that are within a specific environment from a political standpoint. So if there's enough pressure put on those providers, it could impact you and your data and your services. Okay, now let's come to the pros and cons of running things off your own hardware. The pros are complete control. Since you own everything from hardware to software and services, you are actually controlling every aspect there. Second pro is trustworthiness. Nobody interferes with what you do. It is your hardware, it is your software, it is your services. Obviously, you are always bound to legal regulations, but apart from that, it is completely your decision what you run there and how you run it. Third, portability. Actually, that depends on how you run things. But if you just have things on old hardware, on casual hardware, whatever, there's a good chance that you could actually be able to just take the machines, throw them into your car and physically move them away if necessary. Obviously, that is a bit harder when you actually host things in the data center, but you get the point. Fourth aspect, which is on the pro side of things, is that the hardware, the infrastructure, is at some point of time paid for. So nobody can take that away from you anymore. It is your own possession. It belongs to you. It is your infrastructure. Cons. Well, first of all, a lot more responsibility on your shoulders. You are responsible for security. You are responsible for maintaining the hardware. You are responsible for doing proper backups. So a lot of things are on your side when we speak about responsibilities. Secondly, you need to operate those services. That basically is on top of the responsibility question. So you need to be able to fix issues. You need to be able to roll out updates. So you need to be able to implement or integrate new features as you need them. Third, 
it is your hardware. So basically you have nobody else to blame for that. You are responsible for, you know, finding replacement parts, for adding new infrastructures and so on and so forth. Fourth, capex, capital expenses. You need to buy the infrastructure. Good thing is again, it could be dirt cheap, old used infrastructure. But nonetheless, you have to spend money on that. And fifth, you need to have a backup plan. And I don't mean local backups. Since the data is in your environment, you need to make sure that you have a backup plan in place that backups encrypted data on a trustworthy location elsewhere. Since your own hardware is to some extent a single point of failure. With a public cloud environment, it would be pretty easy to move things to a different data center to probably replicate things there. With your own hardware, not so much. But what you can do is to actually take backups of your data and store that in an encrypted way on public cloud environments or somewhere else. So you see a lot of pros and cons. The good thing is you can actually mix things up. So you can have specific services running on public cloud infrastructures, whereas other services would run on your own infrastructure. So that is in your hands. That kind of ability is also something you gain from the decision to take things into your own hands and to be in control. So the question is, what exactly should you run under your control? Typical services would be file services, like your own file server, your own um, um, file storage, those things, those should be under your control. Your passwords would be also a very, very, very useful service to run on your own. If you think of passwords, typically, if you actually have a password service in place, but typically you would use a service such as LastPass or 1Password or whatever. Those are great, but those are services provided by third parties to you. So you need to make sure that you can actually trust them and they would never ever cut you off their services. I would basically doubt that. You can run your own collaboration services. Think of a Teams replacement. Think of a video conferencing tool that can run on top of your own hardware, on top of your own infrastructure. Heck, you could even run your own Signal server so that your WhatsApp replacements would not run across public infrastructure. So, could also be something pretty interesting. Let me put it that way. The only service that I would not recommend run on your own infrastructure would be mail. Reason for that is that mail services are typically pretty complex to set up. Not from the sheer technical perspective, but more from a perspective of spam and preventing from spam. So that is something that you would probably leave in the hands of Google, Microsoft or whatever. But what you then should have in place is your own mail backup. A service that could actually be used to send and receive emails, but would not do that on a day-to-day -day basis, but instead fetch incoming mails from your actual provider. That would then give you again a lot of independence going forward. So yeah, that list is not complete. There are literally dozens, if not hundreds of different services you could run, project management services, planning services, and so on and so forth. Most of the things that you could think of as being services being provided to you by other companies could actually be rolled out on your own infrastructures and could run there as well. Probably not the original service, but there are good replacements available for most of the things. And going forward, we will touch upon those things on how to set them up, on how to manage them,
on how to actually make them work for you because it is worth it. You being in control gets you back in control. It makes you independent of what others decide for you. So what do you think? Do you agree with me on the necessity of being able to run your own services going forward? Or would you rather rely on third parties providing you services? Do you feel that knowledge is something that would limit you in doing that? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time and don't forget, let's make the world a better place now more than ever. See you later. Take care. Bye.